Hello and welcome to another Creative Success Stories episode, a series of live interviews that showcases wisdom and lessons learned from successful creative entrepreneurs around the world. My name is Jewel Tolentino, and we have an awesome guest for you today on the Esatino Artist channel. I'm going to be interviewing William Hung. For those of you who are new here, our YouTube channel is a resource for creative entrepreneurs. We release videos daily on money, marketing, and mindset for creative entrepreneurs. So if that sounds cool to you, be sure to subscribe to the channel. Okay, so let's get started. After his American Idol audition, William's hung rendition of She Bangs became famous for all the wrong reasons. Despite a humbling start, William redeemed himself. He has since appeared on Jimmy Kimmel Live and The Ellen Show and even performed live with Ricky Martin in Las Vegas. William has spent the last 16 years studying the world's top performers and public speakers to uncover the secrets to success. Using what he discovered, he skyrocketed his first studio album, Inspiration, to the number one spot on the independent Billboard charts. He has spoken for TEDx twice, Microsoft, and Remax. He now helps people find their unconventional path to success because he believes everyone has a right to try something new without being judged or ridiculed. He uses his experience from gaming to help his clients with improving their public speaking. So please help me welcome William Hung. Yay! <laughs> Happy to have you on here, William. You're welcome. So let's get down to it. Let's start off where it all began. Um, I believe it was 2003 you had said it was the American Idol audition. First of all, why, well, why did you end up auditioning for American Idol? I remember I was studying at UC Berkeley for civil engineering. I wasn't doing well and I felt like I needed to try something new. So one day I saw a poster for a school talent show at my dormitory. I figured, why not? There's nothing to lose. So I started watching and studying music videos from Ricky Martin's She Bangs. <laughs> That's awesome. I loved that song by Ricky Martin when it came out. I love pretty much all the songs that Ricky Martin <laughs> yeah. has, but She Bangs was definitely a good one. Yeah. So you auditioned and you, you did you choose that song specifically? Uh, yes, because I, I like the unique catchy tune that I couldn't find in any other songs. <laughs> That's awesome. And so what was the audition process like at the time for American Idol? Uh, I had to go through multiple preliminary rounds. Uh, so I had to start off by lining up at a huge baseball park with 3,000 other people that year, back in 2003. And I honestly did not expect to make it through. Um, I guess when I was standing in line, most people, they only got 15 seconds to sing before the American Idol staff members told them to go home. But somehow, they let me sing over a minute, and they let me through. They told me to come back the next day. And the next day, I auditioned in front of the producers, and somehow, they let me through again, and told me to keep doing she bangs. <laughs> That's awesome. What city was this in? San Francisco. Okay, cool. So in California. So there must have been like, yeah, like a ton of people in California going for it, American Idol. And so you walk in there and you see Simon, Randy, and Paula. Were you nervous at all? Yeah, I was so nervous that, that my, my movements were so jer very jerky. It's almost like I'm doing samba exercises, not my <laughs> proudest moment. <laughs> Okay, and then you you sing, and then ha what happens? How did it go? And then uh, Simon said, 
Thank you. Thank you. You can sing. You can dance. So what do you want me to say? I said, I already gave my best. I have no regrets at all. Paula said, good for you. That's the best attitude yet. I said, I had no professional training. And Simon goes, no. Well, that's the surprise of the century. <laughs> And um, when I saw, cause I, so I remember seeing that video back in 2003, I was about maybe 15 or 16 years old and it went viral. That video went viral when viral wasn't a thing. YouTube wasn't a thing yet. And it just like all over the place. And so when I rewatched it uh, a couple weeks ago before asking to have you on the show here, and I, I hadn't seen it since 2003, so re-watching it and your response right after uh, Simon said that, you know, he was about to ream you out and like, you know, um, say something nasty to you and you, your response was amazing. Like for you to uh... respond like that to Simon was like, wow, that's the best response that you could have to that. And that's, it's true. It's like, you can only give your best and that's like you were proud of that and yeah. that's amazing so what happened after the interview uh, i just go back to being a normal student uh i didn't expect to uh, have anything going on but four months later after fox broadcasted my audition all of a sudden people started asking me for pictures and autographs at school was it just at school or uh, anywhere else? Um, other places too, eventually. Uh, but I would say it started at the campus. And then uh, more and more people were asking me for like, oh my God, I love you American Idol. Could I have your picture or autograph? Uh, it was so crazy, so overwhelming. I never thought that was possible. And so what was your response to that? Did you like it? Did you not like the attention? I wasn't sure what to make of it. <laughs> it took me a while for me to absorb everything, but I but uh, something that that uh, for, I would say compelled me to uh, go forward with the entertainment industry was when someone decided to make up a story about me. Uh, they said that William Hong committed suicide due to heroin overdose. Oh wow! What the heck? Yeah, I know. It's so weird. Uh, I know it was meant to be a joke, but I, I, I did not see it as a joke at all. I, no. felt like, I felt like that was when I uh, needed to take control of my own story. And mm. the only way I knew how to do that was to take the chance to become an entertainer uh, by signing the record contract. So you did they approach you for the record contract or you went out and saw it? this uh, record contract? Oh, the, the record company uh, asked, uh, get, uh, called me because they they saw how my web, uh, website, williamhunt.net, got like 8 million hits in less than a month. <laughs> when did you make that website? Shortly after American Idol aired? Um, my One of my friends created that website and I had no idea it was going to be that big. <laughs> Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. You probably crashed the website with all those. Yes. <laughs> that's what they said, yeah. So you got this record contract, and then what happened after that? I was living this dream life, performing, traveling everywhere for about four years. I performed in Rose Bowl, uh, like the San Diego Mall with over 10,000 people with multiple built, uh, story buildings. It's crazy. It's, it's, I perform in some of the biggest crowds ever around the world. Wow. But, yeah, but I would say that, you know, it, you know, I couldn't keep getting those opportunities. So I had to make a choice. Do I want to go back to school and get a day job or do I want to uh, keep going for showbiz? I ultimately chose to go back to school and get a stable job. Wow. And... How long did did you do that for? How long? Um, yeah. like, what, you mean, well, I worked for the government for about eight years, two mm -hmm. years for the sheriff's department and six years for the public health department. Wow, that's crazy. And when you're doing these 
concerts was it like a, a full-on show like a full-on set concert type no thing? no usually i'm just doing like three to five songs and you said you traveled all around the world yeah i perform in places like malaysia singapore hong kong and iceland what was your favorite country to perform in I like Singapore. I still like Singapore overall as a, as a country to visit, to travel, to spend time. But I like the, all the other countries too. So, you know, it's, it's not, it's hard for me to choose one favorite one. Do you still perform today? Yeah, of course. It just depends uh, on, on, the, on the situation. Right now, the, the way I perform uh, is through an app called Cameo. Uh, oh, I've heard yeah. of that. Yeah, so the way it works is like it's like a platform where people can pay me some money to sing she bangs, uh, happy birthday songs, uh, songs of a favorite song that I know, whatever, right? Inspirational messages, pep talks. So that's the way I deliver now for, for, for my performance. That's cool. Yeah, I've seen that app, and there's a ton of other people on there. I've seen like Snoop Dogg or something. Yes. Like a whole bunch of other people. That's really cool that you're on there. Yeah. So they can get a personalized message from you through Cameo. Yeah, that's right. And so, what happened after that? How did you get into TED Talks and speaking? Well, I felt like I needed something to do. Um, that's more fun besides my job at the sheriff's department. So I start the speaking journey started about eight years ago, but initially it was just for fun. I wanted to do something more exciting besides reading depressing police reports to, pro to extract the crime data. Right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's so different from what I did before as a professional entertainer. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, so I, 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 I need, I felt I needed that platform. I needed that space, you know, to have to, and then uh, what, what's really cool, and uh, there's an organization called Toastmasters. It's mm -hmm. like a platform for improving your public speaking and leadership skills. And then every meeting, there's a session called Table Topics. Uh, so, the, so someone will ask you some random question, and then you have like two minutes uh, to answer. So to me, it's like a form of speaking karaoke. <laughs> speaking karaoke, that's a good way of putting it. Yeah. Are you still in Toastmasters now? Uh, I, I decided to take a break, but I'm still active helping uh, the Toastmasters. I, sp I spoke for many of their virtual conferences recently around the country. So yeah, no, I, 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 I really uh, believe in their mission because their mission is to help people find their voice. And that's what we need to do. It doesn't matter what industry, what business, or what career you're in, we have to find our voice. That's an awesome message. Uh, we've got a, some questions here from my business partner, Arich. He said, what would you say was the driving force behind you staying positive and having the attitude of let's keep moving forward? Um, I would say one of the most helpful uh, lessons I learned was from my mom. It's more like a philosophy. It's not a lesson because it's the way uh, what, uh, that she uh, teaches me, right? Like she told me, it's okay to fail as long as you try your best. And that's been my philosophy throughout my life. Wow. And it's definitely carried you through. I mean, any person that would have gone through that, getting that kind of, you know, because feedback from Simon, um, it might even like ruin their lives. And for you to take it and have a singing career, a speaking career, and now your new venture that you're taking on, like that blows my mind. And that's, that's the type of energy and the type of story that we want to share with our viewers. Cause you know, what's the worst that could happen, right? Yes. If, okay. If it doesn't work out, then what? Right. Yeah. I mean, just go back to being normal student. Go, I, I just go back to you know, maybe audition for other, other shows. You never know in life. You just keep trying. That's amazing. We got another question here from Jojo. William, did you audition for American Idol just for a laugh or did you really want to make a go at it? I would say it's not just for a laugh. It's more like, like I mentioned earlier, I had to go through multiple preliminary rounds. So just imagine you have to go through that process 
if you're given the chance, you're going to keep put going forward. You know, the producer told you to keep going forward. The staff told you to keep going forward. So I would say that it's more like you, you want to take advantage of the opportunities that life gives you. That's amazing. And so you start getting into Toastmasters and you start um, wanting to do a speaking career. How did you get TEDx twice? Wow, um, I just got invited. <laughs> so very, very fortunate for me because it's not that easy to get accepted to do a TEDx talk. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I, I'm very grateful for both of my experiences in Los Angeles area. Uh, it was a, uh, actually one of those in Los Angeles in 2018 and 2019 was San Diego. But uh, it was it was an, it was a really memorable experience. I would, especially the second time. Uh, after I finished delivering my speech, I remember I cried tears of joy. Come, I had tears coming down my eyes. We're standing wow. in the red circle. Yeah, it, it, I guess I was. I enjoyed it so much. Every moment, I treasured it. So, well, the, yeah. I think I watched the first one that you did. I didn't watch the 2019, so I watched the 2018. And if you guys have a chance, go check it out. We'll share it in our Facebook group as well, the Creative Business Success um, Facebook group. But the first one that William did you were telling the story and the whole audience, like you, you, you have a way of um, your pauses and you were making them laugh. And it was, it was really good. Like I really enjoyed the talk and we'll definitely share it with the community. So you guys make sure to check that out. Uh, we've got another comment here from Ron. William, did you see Jimmy Yang on the Joe Rogan podcast recently? They talked about you. Uh, I heard about it, but I didn't watch it. Uh, but I, I heard it's uh, it's uh, it's negative. My friends told me to don't 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 go don't spend time watching it. But really, I, I have I have a good idea of the essence of it. Like, but but it's not a big deal because you know because uh, I'm just doing what I believe is right. You know, I'm working with uh, someone uh, to turn my book into a movie, uh, and and. She, yeah, that's 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 what I'm working on. It's not some secret that I need to hide under the bed, right? And it's, it's uh, you know, that my, uh, I trust her I, uh, because she's a very experienced uh, independent movie creator. She her her independent movie has been you know won some several awards. So you know, it it is it, it, you can we can't please everybody, you know. It's so it's okay to to do you know to take action that's you know you're not hurting other people you might not like it but we're not hurting other people we, we try to put out something that can inspire people that's amazing and yeah that's one of the things that we say on our channel is it doesn't matter how good you are or how much free value we give on our channel like we're always going to have haters we have haters and i'm we're providing free value tutorials and that's just it's just going to happen. You're never going to please everyone and yeah. you don't want to please everyone. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so that is really cool to hear that there might be a movie. Like I would definitely go and see that. Who, who would you want to play you? If you um, had the, uh, the, the honest answer is probably nobody but by myself. Uh, oh, so I, you would want to play you. Yeah. I thought about it. I thought about who would be a good fit, but, but I was, but I'm thinking, that, that that is it's very because I'm the way I think and the way I talk the, the, you know, it's just so different it's radically different from other people that it's hard for people to to uh, to embody that. That's amazing. Um, so you're in the talks right now for a movie. Um, there's nothing finalized yet, or no, no, it's just it's just like like the general um, concept, but no, not yet. Cool. And so you do TED Talks and you get invited to speak at Remax and Microsoft, it said. And yeah. I guess just people see that you're doing talks and then you just get more and more. Is that how it works for you? Yeah, I, I, that's, that, that's, uh, that's, tends, that tends to be the way it works for me. But I'm also not just relying on that. Uh, I'm not getting that many like speaking opportunities, relatively speaking. Like what that what that means is like it's not like I'm getting like you know uh, four to five a month that's that's paying me like paying me like tens of thousands of dollars you know like 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 really like like uh, I have to be proactive to pursue them to get a feel, to get to get the feel that I really want uh, but it but you know as the, the the I don't mind revealing that 
the best ones I've got are the ones that I got invited to. It's just much easier the other way around when people want you and willing to pay you a lot, <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah. right? So yeah, but but it's all but it's all you know after that you know experiencing you know both sides of it. Like one side is like okay, I'm getting invited, I'm getting paid a lot of money to do one speech, and then the other side is like you know I had to hustle, I had to get a feel here and there. But you know I have been on both sides of the coin, and I, what I can say is that. It's not. It's all about your overall life mission. It's not just about the money. You know, like like when I when I speak for Toastmasters, for example, you know, I don't. I I'm not gonna get paid. It, like when I do TED Talk, I'm not gonna get paid, right? Uh, it, it's just the way that the, 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 uh, the, the those organizations work. But I ask myself: Is if money and resource is not an issue, would I still want to do it? That's an amazing. That is, it's very similar to us. We're very much preaching that exact same thing. Don't chase the money because that, eventually, that's gonna leave an empty hole in you. Like you have to chase what lights you up, what gets you excited, your passion. You know, yes. and we often say that same line. If yeah. money was not an object, would you be doing this? And yeah. a lot of the times, they, you know, our students have to think about that, and it's like. Yeah, actually, it would. So, and and if you are, then that's a good indication that yeah, you know, go for it. Right. You don't want to make those decisions just based on the money because it's not going to get you further along. Like, it's not going to get you long, like far in life. Because <laughs> you know, when we first started our entrepreneurial journey in 2010, we did right. chase the money. We totally chased the money online. Yeah. You know, what's the latest, hottest thing that's happening? Um, right. you know, let's do this and that. And, you know, eventually you'll be making money from it, but you don't enjoy it and you feel empty and it doesn't fulfill you and you don't yeah. want to do it anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So yeah. that's an amazing message that you've got there. Yeah. Let's see here. We've got a comment here. Oh, not that one. We've got a comment here that said, OMG, me and my friends were just talking about you, William Hung. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And here you go. You're seeing him <laughs> live. <laughs> and then Linda says, it is so true that it's not about the money. It is the passion that drives. I love your attitude. Yeah, your positive energy is very infectious, William. And that's exactly why we wanted you here on the show. Let's see here from Arit. She says, William, what advice would you give to creatives who are afraid to get started on their goals and dreams? We have this all the time. So what would you say to them? I would say focus on your your spiritual mission first and what gets you excited to wake up each day. Uh, and my, my spiritual mission is that I believe everyone has a right to try something new without being judged or ridiculed. So it doesn't matter what I do and what I put out there. That's my brand. That's my identity. Uh, like, like it could be speaking, it could be coaching, it could be gaming. It doesn't matter, right? That's why I stand for. That's who I am. So go for that. Think about that, right? What do you stand for? It might you, you might believe something similar, but it's usually not the same. So you need to figure that out for yourself first, and then you can figure out, okay, how can I accomplish that mission? What can I do to accomplish that mission? What am I passionate about? What I'm talented with? Uh, and then go for it. Whatever that that radical dream vision of yours that 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 feels like wow, that's so crazy. It's not the norm. Uh, I could tell you my 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 next uh, three month six six month goal is to compete at the world championship uh, for team fight tactics. It's a new game. It's like an auto battle kind of game. You know, it's crazy. Like, given that I have, I don't have experience yet with that with that game. I'm brand new to it. It's something that's kind of like way out there. It's very similar to my audition for American Idol, right? It's like I don't, I might, I don't have, I might not have the pure talent. I don't know where I end up, right? I might end up looking silly, embarrass myself in in uh, tens of hundreds of thousands of, of viewers, whatever, right? <laughs> <laughs> but it's the same thing in your life. Right, whatever that crazy dream you think might be crazy, go for it. If you if you truly believe, truly believe in it, you'll do whatever it takes to get there. And the way to get there is not um, it's not always the the path that you might think it is. Like for example, I've been I, when I ask when I ask the thing about that dream, 
I know the chances are against me that I'm not going to qualify. I'm not going to win that championship. So what? It might open new doors that you had never thought of. Yes, exactly. We have the same message, William. It's crazy. And this, like this, like me being able to uh, interview you, I was thinking like, you know, because I remember watching you when I was 2003, I was 16, 15, 16, I was in high school. I'm like, did I ever <laughs> think that I would be interviewing William Hung from American Idol that went viral in front of millions of people? Like, you, And you know, like YouTube, we, we're YouTubers. YouTube wasn't even invented yet in high school. You just, yeah, you never know what could happen by putting yourself out there and yeah. having a positive outlook on life. I know it sounds cheesy to people like, oh yeah, be positive, but it really, like I, I choose to see the glass half full and I know many people see it half empty. Water's yeah, still the same. Yeah, yeah. The water is still the same and you can just choose, you know, half full, half empty. Yeah. And so that was like a perfect answer. I really, I'm just, I'm getting so excited because it's like, this is what we talk about all the time to people. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see here. Uh, Linda says, William, what do you want to do next that you haven't done yet? You, I think you mentioned that you want to win the gaming championship with that. Uh, I actually want to create my own gaming platform. That's my big goal. And that, and, and like, like that, but that could be like three to five years down the road. Uh, so right now I'm figuring out like, what is the next step I can take to get myself closer? And to me, the path that I want to commit to or explore is to get good at one game and build my community within that, uh, within that one game. And so have you, you've started the process of uh, creating the platform or right now you're just building the community? I'm building the community first. That's more, because that's, it doesn't matter what you do, that's always the most important thing. Because if you don't have community, then, then what's the point of creating something? Like nobody's gonna buy it, yeah. Exactly. And then Jojo says, being brave enough to try out for American Idol has opened so many doors for you. Ah. Good of you to take that chance. Yeah, I know. It's like it. Most people would have been, I guess, embarrassed and would have wanted to hide from that moment. But yeah. you have embraced it, and because you have embraced it, it's like you've had this whole crazy life and I, yeah. like, I I've been so excited that I've been telling like, you know, friends and family that I'm, you guys got to hear his story. It's crazy. <laughs> um, let's see here. No fun says damn bro. That's crazy. Rate says yes. Love your energy, William. And Douglas says so true. William, everyone's loving it. Great advice. Douglas says, always continue creating and you never know what good results can come your way. What what would you say to people that, you know, they're in that position where they're like, I don't, I don't know what I like. I don't know what my passion is. We get this question all the time. Oh, of course. They just don't know where to start. Cause they're 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 in a routine. They most likely are in a job or position in life that they don't like. And yeah. they just can't see anything else but like negative and bad. How how do they even get started? Yeah. Well, start start uh, start start off like a side hustle, you know, like a hobby on the side. Uh, you know, whatever job or position that you might not enjoy doing, chances are there's something else that you enjoy doing. And what you enjoy doing, like I said, it, uh, you don't need approval from other people to to uh, to turn that into your own niche. Uh, it could it could be uh, uh, suing, it could be yachting, it could be talking about uh, you know the new uh, economic uh, theory of creating money, whatever, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it could be so, whatever that's whatever you you feel good about it, but it doesn't feel like oh my god, do I really want to be doing that? It's, it doesn't seem like the norm. It doesn't seem like that's something that people will agree to, right? So 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 whatever that is. Go for that. It sounds crazy, right? It's like it's like it's almost. But the, but, if you, but that's that. What makes you unique? Because otherwise, what's, what? Where? How do you make yourself unique? And then the other thing is like it doesn't have to be something. Com you don't have to create something completely new. Something that that's never in the market, never done before. 
Because actually, it's the uh, it's, it's the reverse, right? Because because if there's no proven demand for something, then then you and actually that's act is a lot harder and much riskier. So coaching is something that many people have done it before, right? They already got there; they're successful. So you can't go for that. Another example is gaming. What I'm doing now. I'm not going to be the first person. There are many people who are successful as Twitch streamers. You know, build their own community, monetize, whatever, right? So I'm not the first person. I'm going to be maybe like ten thousand person, a hundred thousand person doing it. So, so you know, so don't be don't be afraid to go for a path that's known. But maybe like over over time, as you explore, as you do it, then you can find your unique flavor. Yes, I totally agree. And you know, pay attention to those little clues in your life. You know, if pe- if someone's saying like, if someone's asking you for a specific thing, like, oh, what? How do you um, you know, how do you how did you cook that meal, or how did you get so fit, or how are, how are you doing that biking? Like, pay yeah. attention to what people are asking you for on yes. advice or um, you know, recommendations, that kind of thing. Pay attention to what you are doing in your spare time um, when you're not getting paid because yeah. it's a clear indication of, oh, that you you do it without getting paid. Yeah. And so, you know, that's that's what the sort of the first things that uh, of advice we would say to to people is to start off with there. And to be honest, it's like what I say to people is like, how do you know what food you like? Right? How do you know? How did you know that you like that pizza? And how did you know that you like that fruit and you don't like that one? Yeah. It's because you tried it and yes. then you either spit it out because you didn't like it or you didn't eat it again or you eat more of it because you like it. Yes. Same thing with life. Try different things out. Try you. You. You will not know until you try. Yeah. Um, you'll know. You'll know quite soon whether you like it or not. Like there's so many things in our little entrepreneurial endeavors. Like I, I need to one day make a list of all the things that we've tried because it's literally like a hundred things before we landed on YouTube. And wow. yeah, like so many different things. This is like 10 years ago. And, but the thing is, you know, like, like you, we had this whole positive outlook and, you know, we had um, pushback from people. And I said, I don't care how long this takes. I'm going to figure the online world out. I'm going to yeah. figure out how to make an online living, li- living from um, the online world. Cause I, I felt like it was the future at the time back in 2010. Yeah. And so that's how you need to just like, just seriously, like what's the worst that could happen? I would always ask myself that question. And then if it's like, it's usually not as bad as you think it's going to be. I, I like that question a lot too. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We got here. Uh, Jojo says she loves your story. Linda says, I choose half full every time. And that's the thing is it's a choice. You have a choice. The cup is either half full or half empty and that's up to you. Ron says, William, what was it like meeting Ricky Martin? I would love to know what it was like. Well, he's a very down to earth, very, very genuine. Uh, like, like uh, he, he was very enthusiastic to, to uh, give my friend a hug, shook hands with me. Uh, so yeah, no, really, really, really good, cool guy. Uh, and I really like uh, what he's doing, like, like helping out, like through the Puerto Rico, you know, that, because it's, it's also, they also hit very hard by the pandemic, like everywhere else around the world. So yeah, mm-hmm. I, I like, like, uh, I like uh, how he's doing something that's beyond himself. And you said that you performed in Las Vegas with Ricky Martin, what was it like yeah. to have that full stadium of people? Uh, it felt very surreal. It's, it's like after 14, 15 years, it find, I finally get to perform him on the same stage. <laughs> That's crazy. When when all this went down in 2003, did you like, did Ricky Martin reach out to you or did you have any? Oh, yeah. oh here's what happened. Uh, after my initial American Idol audition, uh, I think Ricky Martin mentioned like four to five times uh, over the past like 14, 15 years that he wanted to perform with me on the same stage. But it didn't happen until two years ago. Wow, that's crazy. And who would have known, like who would have thought that, you know, that audition, you know, 2003, and then you perform with him in Las Vegas. Yes. 
Wow. Did you ever get in contact with like uh, Simon Cowell again or Randy or Paula? Anyone? Um, like I met I met them uh, four to five times over the years, like at different events. Yeah. Uh, I performed at those st big stages, uh, but not like personally, no. What's Simon Cowell like in real life? Uh, at that, at, it's hard to say because it seems like he's playing a character. Uh, but he, I remember he said that. Don't don't even think about it. You will never make it in the music industry. Uh, and, and you know, so I I feel like like I I understand where he's coming from because mm -hmm. I don't have the traditional music music talent. Mm -hmm. But by what why by what I told myself is that what is the purpose of entertainment? And to me, the purpose of entertainment is to bring joy and happiness to other people. And I think you've done that. We've got uh, some golden advice from William. If you have a passion or something that interests you, go for it, try it out and focus on building a community around what you love. Exactly. Good one, Arit. And then we've got No Fun says, how do you keep motivated when things aren't going well? So you must have bad days like of everyone course. else. <laughs> of course. I, I would say what helped me um, the most is to write out your self-limiting beliefs. Uh, like, I'm not good enough. I don't have enough money. Uh, I, I don't have enough time. Whatever the common uh, uh, excuses we have in our head. I mean, we all go through it. You know, we're not immune to that. And, and then, and then I, the way I, I get with it is like, after I wrote down those key self-limiting beliefs, I would, and then I would write down the next column. I would write like the empowering beliefs. What's the opposite of that? What can, mm -hmm. like, for example, the one of the, the, the ones that came up recently because of the pandemic is that the world is coming to an end. Uh, it was particularly bad in Los Angeles. There were like riots, like a couple miles away from where I live. It's like people are doing the stores, people are hurting each other. I saw the, the, the graphics from LA Times, it's like awful. And it was like, oh my God, what kind of world is this? You know, what's the point of me showing up uh, if the world is gonna, it's gonna be like this, right? Mm -hmm. but, I thought, but I had to tell myself, that's not gonna, that's gonna, that's not gonna last, you know? I had, to let, I had to remind myself that there's more to this world, for sure. The world will always continue to evolve. So that, so that's that's my empowering belief, and then uh, I would write down the, the 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 evidence to support the empowering belief. So so that's the process I go through. Like like the evidence, like okay, I got invited to do two TEDx talks. I got invited to speak for Microsoft and Remax. Yeah, like, like things like that, like things that, that that's empowering. And then finally, what the last one is like empowering questions. Uh, what kind of questions uh, can you ask yourself uh, when things are not going well? Uh, like, like to re remind yourself that there's going to be a better world out there for you. One question that works very, very well for me is like, what are the qualities I need to have in order to be X? What are the qualities I need in order to be a grandmaster, a world champion? If, like, if, if that's your goal, right? Like, like let's say I want to be a, a successful artist. Maybe be a little bit more specific. What do you mean by that? Do you want to be the best artist in a certain category? Do you want to uh, uh, your art to reach a thousand people? What uh, what do you need to do from uh, to get there? When you ask yourself that question, a lot of times you will figure out the how. That's amazing. And the thing is, you don't need to... A lot of people get fixated on how am I going to do this exactly? Like they want the exact blueprint of yes. how it's going to go like yes. step by step by step. And if they don't know it, then that scares them and it freezes them and yeah. they often don't do anything. And yeah. do you think that, you know, like you or I knew the path of this, like it's exciting when you don't know what's going to happen. Like I like that. I didn't know that in 2020 I was going to interview you earlier. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm like a little bit starstruck right now, and I'm like, wow, this is crazy. You just never know, and it's exciting. And I, I like that I don't know. You need mm -hmm. to get okay with that because if you need to know every single thing that's going to go on, then it's like 
it's going to impair you. Like you won't be able to move forward because you're not going to know all the steps and it might not be exactly how you want it to go. It yeah, might, I might get like hardship first and then have something cool happen. Yeah. All right. We've got here another comment from Linda. I think we all have a little voice that we are afraid to listen to in those horrible moments. But like you were saying, we have to just let go and go for it. I love the food analogy too. Yeah, I, I, will, I, I say that food analogy because I want to make it so simple for people. Because people make a big deal about, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to choose. What should I start? And I'm like, okay, well, how do you know what food do you like? And it's like, because you just try it. You just take a bite out of it and you try it and yeah. you eat more of it or you don't. And I just want to make it simple for people. And, you know, we all have bad days. Like people see us and they think like, oh, they're so positive and they've got like everything going for them. <laughs> and, but the truth is it's the ability to get back when something bad happens. So yes. I have bad days just like I'm like a regular person. I get angry. I get annoyed. Things happen. Like I don't yeah, feel all the time. But it's like how fast can you bounce back? Because there are – I used to be the type of person that would, you know – a whole my whole day would be ruined and then the next day and then the entire week and then people live in this like cycle of uh dread and negativity because it's wow. spiral it can get it can get out of control for sure right. but you, you have to have the power to stop it right there and know that it's impacting you in a negative way yes. so that like like is this benefiting me right now? Is is me being angry? Like, is am I benefiting from this? And the answer is usually no. Yeah. And so the ability to come back faster is going to be a really great strength to have. So I would I would focus on that if you if you have that kind of an issue. And it's like you're not gonna you're not gonna be the type of person that doesn't have bad days. Everybody has bad days, who, yeah. whoever you are, right? Right. right. Awesome. Um, people are loving the advice. This is really cool. Uh, yeah, let us know, you guys, if you have any more questions for William. Um, but at this, oh, we, we do actually. Um, besides the limiting beliefs activity, what are some things that you do to get back into a good mindset? Um, I also take breaks uh, when, when I feel that I'm not productive. Um, for me, everybody has the, the different things that work for them. For me personally, it's just like put, uh, temporarily stepping away from my computer, uh, taking a taking a short nap, you know, uh, visualizing like 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 the the empowering questions. You know, ask myself like you know how a lot like one common question I usually ask like how do I want my day to go, or maybe like what can I do differently right, to make my day go better. And so, so you know, it's not about forcing yourself to be glued at the chair when you're not able to create. Because we are creatives, right? We want to create, but but we but in order to create the best uh, the best product or service, it need, we need to have that inspired energy, and that's very hard to do. And that's not easy. That's why. That's why. But but that's also why it's so rewarding at the same time. Yeah, I agree. Um, when we when I get in those moments as well, I have to step back. I have to go work out or yeah. I have to watch a movie, <laughs> watch a funny movie on Netflix yeah. or um, watch a, a thing on uh, YouTube. I usually type in like motivational stories or I'll watch interviews of people that I look up to. I have certain podcasts and, and YouTube channels that are kind of like my go-to yeah. kind of thing. And I, yeah, like as soon as you feel that, resistance of oh this is not working right now you need to step back or i'm getting too stressed out or something all right, all right. you need to take that break and oftentimes you'll come back and it'll be even better yes. you know you'll see things that you didn't see or you'll be able to solve whatever problem you were trying to solve um yeah it's definitely take time for that uh let's see here ron says william do you get recognized in public? Any stories? Do you have any cool stories of being recognized? Yeah, yeah of course, many, many times. Uh, but, but one of the most memorable experiences was in Hong Kong uh, when I was on my way back to my hotel room. Uh, uh, the, there was a, uh, one, of my, uh, one of the fans 
ran up to the elevator, got down on his knees, and asked me, William, may I have uh, your autograph and picture with you? It's like, oh my God, it's so crazy. He would block the doorway. It was so, it was like a scene, you know? <laughs> yeah, oh wow, I bet you get that a lot. Yeah, I mean, now I don't get that uh, uh, as often, but before it was pretty crazy. Wow, that's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> It probably catches you off guard and like. Yeah, well, I'm shocked. <laughs> Jojo says, uh, very motivating, William. That's so cool. All right. So uh, you said that you have a book. So let us know what your book is about and uh, where we can grab that. Yes, my book is called Champion by Choice. Uh, so I worked on this book for a couple of years. I love the title, by the way, just so just sorry to interrupt, but like champion by choice, that title alone is like, just think about that for a second, right? And it, why did you choose that title? Uh, because I got inspired by uh, a conference that I, taught, I spoke for a couple of years ago. Uh, and when I saw their theme was champion by choice, it reminds me that, you know, I'm, I, I, people chose me to be the champion. I didn't see myself as a champion yet. Uh, and, and I believe that everybody can choose to be a champion in their lives. And, um, okay, so you've got your book there. Where can we find it? And what kinds of, without giving away too much, what, what's, what's the course. book? Yeah, so, so the idea is that, you know, it teaches you how to become a champion in your life. Uh, you can find it on Amazon, but the easiest way is probably to just go directly to my website willhung.com w-i-l-l-h-u-n-g.com cool yeah you guys can go there and also we we, uh, we do have the amazon link there if you guys have amazon prime or something <laughs> to order it and um we've got rg titan says hey william do you have any more plans to do ted talks also i admire your courage did you learn that from anyone um, not right now for more TED Talks. I've already done two TEDx Talks, which is very similar uh, because they do check for the, the talks you've done previously before they let you, they, they consider you. So it's not a rush. You know, the most important, re, re, important thing to remember about TED Talks is like ideas both spreading. So I would like to wait until I have some uh, a, a new concept that I develop uh, by combining gaming into living life, you know, then I then have something that's really cool to share. Cool. And uh, did you learn the courage from anyone? I, I know that you had mentioned your mom. Was there anybody else that you got that from? Um, I would say uh, from friends, mentors, uh, and and then other people like uh, like selfless heroes, unknown heroes in in their own niches. You know, I, I saw, I, I, uh, I, well, I was very inspired by a YouTube creator. His name is Bunny Muffins. He's an Asian kid, you know, playing the game. And he's not the best player in the game, but I admire his mindset. It is incredible the, 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 the way he structures his day, the way he approaches the game. It's like, wow, I wish everybody can approach life that way, including myself. Jojo says, great title. And yes, Linda, um, the book uh, will be also in the description, but also at William's website. Um, be sure to check that out, as well as his TED Talks. You guys look those up. All right, so we have that there. And you said that you are working on um, creating a new gaming platform. Yep. Uh, that's your ultimate goal. Is there anything else that you have on the horizon? Or what are you doing right now uh, during the craziness of the times? Well, I'm going to focus on qualifying for the world championship for Team Fight Tactics for the next three to six months. Uh, so the, 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 the Riot Games already announced uh, there will be like a, the first ever uh, championship, $200,000 prize pool. Uh, they have qualifiers going on in Europe, but not for North America yet. So yeah, I'm looking forward to it. I'm excited uh, about it. And, and, and the reason I want to commit to this one path, and here's something that, that's good for your listeners. We, nobody knows what's going to come out of it. Nobody knows that that's a right or wrong path, right? We, it's, it's easy for us to put on the blinders. It's like, okay, you got a great result. Therefore, this is the right path. 
or you didn't get what you're looking for 95% of the time. Therefore, you shouldn't have done it. That's, that's not how I look at it. Because in life, you don't, you don't have control over the result. You only have control over your actions. So the one, one way to explore the different possibilities in your life, but do it in a serious way, is to set like three-month blocks. You know, that's what I'm planning to do, right? Three-month block. Let's, let's commit to one direction. Let's, let's, put, let's put in my very best effort. And then let's see what happens. Yeah, I love that advice. And it's something that we have practiced as well. We we give it our all. We go for it for a certain amount of time. And then we realize if we really like it or if we don't. And if we don't, okay, we gave it our all, move on to something new that you know that that we want to try. Yeah. And that's how that's how you're gonna you find what you like. You just you literally just need to try. It's I, I know people want this complicated advice, but it's it's really simple. You just need to you just need to get out of your own head and just try and just try. And if you if you like it, if you don't like it, it's you know go off of those kinds of uh, guidance system that that your body is telling you. I really love uh, your story, William. Thank you so much for uh, coming on our channel and sharing your story. It was really cool to hear. Any last words of wisdom for the people out there? Never give up your dreams. Chase your dreams authentically. Take inspired action one step at a time each and every day. <laughs> nice. You had that one ready to go. That's awesome. And it's very similar to us dare to be dream driven you have to dare to go after your dreams it's not easy and you you actually have to have guts and courage you know like your book champion by choice like that was you made a choice to be like that right yes. Every, glass half empty half full everyone's got a choice right all right so like jojo says you're the perfect example of what can happen when you're brave enough to take chances i love that jojo thank you for that that's awesome um uh linda says thank you for your time william and no fun one more question here will you record an audiobook version or produce um an audiobook version of your book i actually asked him that before we went live because i i do listen to audible so um you said that not right now? Not right now, but I'll work on it when I get a chance. Awesome. We'll leave this here for William here. I believe that's the perfect comment for him. Uh, you guys, his website and his links, the Twitch links, um, where you can find him, the book, it's all in the description of the, the YouTube video. And um, you guys can check that out. Uh, please go and get his book, watch his TED Talk. William has an amazing vibe and energy, very similar to ours. That's why we wanted him on here. And I'm so excited and happy that we were able to do this interview. Thank you so much, William. You're welcome. Thank you, guys. And we'll see you in the next video.